dropping gems from Keisha Christian. She's on a mission, sharing information, knowledge for soul, body and mind. Dropping gems, KeishaGems.com. KeishaGems.com Welcome to episode 14 of Just Dropping Gems podcast. My name is Keisha Christian, holistic lifestyle coach, author, and owner of Keisha's Gems LLC. This episode is sponsored by Venice Richards, founder and executive producer of the hashtag Pink and Sexy Gala for Sickle Cell. As a Sickle Cell warrior, it is her passion to find a non-invasive universal cure for Sickle Cell and to improve the lives of those living with Sickle Cell on Long Island. Come out and enjoy the hashtag Pink and Sexy Gala Long Island Fashion Show Fundraiser for Sickle Cell on Saturday, July 27th 2019 at the Gramercy Ballroom in Rockville Center, Long Island. This year, the hashtag Pink and Sexy team will honor Sickle Cell Warriors living on Long Island. Want to find out how to support this great cause? Please check the show notes for more information. My guest on this episode is Eileen Lichtenstein. CEO of Balance and Power Incorporated in Uniondale, Long Island, New York, and author of Soar with Resilience, the interactive book for overcoming obstacles and achieving success. She's also a certified EFT advanced practitioner, national certified anger management specialist, and has specialized for over 20 years in personal and career development coaching and training, stress reduction, management, communicating effectively, and career issues. Eileen has facilitated interactive trainings with medical, educational, and corporate environments, which help people to access the power already within to bring about the balance needed to achieve their goals. She facilitates trainings on site and sees clients and small groups in her Uniondale office and online. If you would like a complimentary 20-minute phone consult, she can be reached at 516-623-4353. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Keisha. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes, and I'm so happy to reconnect with you. I met Eileen, I think it was about um, four or five years ago. I don't even remember how long ago, but we used to do, um, we used to go to bazaars. We had bazaars together. We, had a, we each had a table at a holistic health fair, I recall. Yes, 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 most definitely. And Eileen was always interesting, especially when she um, would give her presentations and you would also do um, mini workshops, I remember. So it was always enlightening to hear you speak. Very uplifting person. Thanks so much, Keisha. It means a lot for me to, for you to say that. Yes, so I definitely remembered you. You stayed in my mind. And um, when um, the topic of EFT came up, I was so excited. Um, being that I've taken a class in um, emotional freedom technique, that's what EFT stands for, but um, to have someone who's actually certified in advanced training could even teach me even more about the topic, I just think is great. So I'm so happy we cross, we cross paths again and you're on the podcast today. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So um, what exactly is EFT for those? I know I said what it was, but for... Um, the audience out there who's unfamiliar with this technique, can you um, explain to them what exactly is EFT? Yes, of course. EFT is actually tapping the uh, client or patient tapping on certain meridian points, the same points that are used in the Chinese acupuncture and acupressure system. But we tap there are no needles, no pain at all involved. It's, it's very um, pain-free to do this. And it's a quick 
energetic kind of tapping and there's only six or seven points it's not all of the points in that system which there are many many and what happens when these points are tapped on is that some chemical natural chemical changes in the body take place serotonin which is a feel good feeling uh, natural hormone that many of us are don't have enough of naturally is is sent up to the section of the brain that deals with feelings so it, it helps that part of your brain to send out signals to feel good and at the same time cortisol which is a horrible stress hormone is mm -hmm. naturally uh, just through the pores of your body it's just it leaves and this uh, cortisol is actually it lands in some people as belly fat so a really cool perk of simply tapping on a regular basis could be to lose some belly fat without even trying oh I love that <laughs> yeah, <it's a> perk. <laughs> So I could imagine, um, being that you spoke of serotonin, I could imagine that like, people who um, are dealing with mild depression, or I guess moderate depression, or even people who are dealing with anxiety, this would be a great technique for them. Exactly. And the thing is that uh, studies have shown recently that they're truly, most people in the Western world now do not have enough serotonin in their body for optimal uh, good feelings and it's often a, a pharmaceutically produced ingredient in antidepressants mm -hmm. so sometimes clients see me who they may be on meds but maybe they they just want to supplement the meds or they want to go without meds but please get your doctor's permission don't ever do that yourself yeah, don't don't um wean yourself off or yeah, definitely yeah. consult your yeah. doctor before you do that. <laughs> yeah, that would be with the medical doctor and this would be supplementary if you're already on meds. Oh, nice. Um and what social situations can this be best utilized or in any area of one's life? One of the greatest fears the number one fear, actually, in the Western world is the fear of public speaking. And EFT tapping can absolutely eliminate that. So I've had success stories with clients with that, and also any phobias, such as fear of flying, fear of heights, fear of the water, these all can easily be eliminated with tapping. Oh, nice. But I have a question. What if you're in um, a situation where you can't actually tap? How could you still okay. use EFT? Good like, question. While you're driving. Oh, yeah. Don't tap while you're driving. <laughs> 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 they, they claim, they, the research claims that if you are familiar with the points and the method, you can do it all without tapping, just mentally, and, and it will still work. I really uh, cannot uh, attest for that myself. I don't know, I haven't researched it. But I have in a pinch while I'm driving totally overwhelmed with the crazy drivers out there or whatever it may be, have done that. And, it, and I feel good just feeling like I'm doing something proactive, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was imagining, because you said you could use it um, for fear of water. So I was like, you can't just start tapping if you're in the middle of doing no, an activity. No, and And these days, another, um, uh, for me, when I get into a big crowded public place, like in New York City, for instance, Penn Station, or in an airport, and I travel frequently, I can become easily overwhelmed with the possibilities now in this modern world. Mm -hmm. So, no, I would not walk around the airport tapping in all the points. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, not wonder walking down the street, would you just no, be tapping? No, no, no. There are modified versions of that. For instance, 
Um, if you tap all your fingertips together, just tapping, I'm showing you, but you know, the audience can imagine just tapping all the fingertips together and thinking about the tapping is very, very calming. Mm -hmm. And if you must just go into the restroom and really tap, and I would suggest that at uh, any working situation also, you can tap under the table with your fingers like that at a meeting if, you're, if you have anxiety. And if you must leave, for heaven's sakes, just leave for the restroom and really tap. Oh, nice. I like that. I like that. Well, someone like me, I really don't care if I'm outside and people see me tapping. <laughs> you're going don't bump into a tree you know no, if I'm just standing there and say like because it does happen like um if I'm in the subway or on the train I yes. have felt overwhelmed and I'll just start yes. tapping I really don't yes. care what the people around me think <laughs> no if you're sitting comfortably in the seat it, it's different than if you're standing or walking through Penn Station or an airport you no know? I wouldn't do that no <laughs> I don't want to bump into anyone. <laughs> no, and you don't want them thinking you're, you know, whatever they may think anyway. <laughs> um, do you actually teach these techniques? I do. I teach them to clients, and I have permission from the um, Anger Management Association, the nationally uh, the respected association that has certified me, has given me permission to use it, the tapping, even with court mandated cases. Oh, okay. That's how well documented it's become. And I actually had, um, I was invited to speak at a conference for anger management, but it just didn't work out with the timing and everything. But they accepted my proposal to teach EFT at an anger management conference for practitioners. Oh, nice. I like yeah. that. So that to me is kind of full circle, you know, with all, with all these, the holistic, the EFT, and then the really, so to speak, down and dirty <laughs> anger management. Some of, the, some of the folks are court mandated. They've been in prison, some are on parole, you know. Mm -hmm. And I also see um, court mandated parenting cases and sometimes co-parenting cases. And I use my judgment. If I think the person is not going to be receptive, I don't bring it up. But usually I'm correct. We have to um, access our intuition a lot in this because when I guide the tapping session, I speak in the client's voice mm. from the coaching um, scenario that, that goes right before it. And I take notes with kind of key words and key phrases. And I, I access that. And I um, let the client know that if I say anything that's incorrect or they could say better, just interrupt me and, and say the correct thing. So they're, they're really in control of content. Oh, so this actually will help someone with anger management, probably will give them the tools they need to... Um, I guess, to help with their, um, their triggers exactly. as far as, as, far as um, dealing with anger. Yes. What happens, if you can imagine a continuum with stress, anxiety, frustration in the middle, and all the way to one side is anger, uh, the extreme being violence, and all the way on the other side is um, suppression, the extreme being, being diagnosed depression. So we all have our individual tipping points, so to speak. So when we go up that middle of stress, frustration, anxiety, and we're ready to tip over one way or the other, we, we notice our triggers the more we get into this work, and you can pull yourself back to center so much more quickly with the tapping. In addition, I'm a very firm believer, in addition with that, to the relaxation, breathing, and guided visualization. Yeah, so all of it together, the meditation, the visual yes. visualization, and the tapping. Yes. So after a while, you probably don't even need to physically tap. You could just 
do it in your, you could do it mentally. You can, you can but it's, it's almost, it's, it's very, I think it's very affirming to physically tap and a really good place to do it is in the shower. Oh, that's a good idea. Especially <laughs> like in the morning, the yeah. Hour, you know? And some people, like some people in the construction work and so on, they shower when they get home from work. Either way, however it works. And and there's no um, there's no such thing as tapping too much. Okay. You could tap all day long. It doesn't matter. Oh, I like that. I could just even imagine being in the shower while you're doing the tapping and then yeah. even the shower um, the being water symbolic is of washing you. Yes. And exactly. then all of that is going down the drain in a way. Yes. So it's just, oh, I like that. Very symbolic. I'm going to try that myself. I know I tap in the shower. I do visualization, all yeah. that in the shower and the washer yes. and tapping. Oh, I like that. And then there's the, um, as a former uh, yoga instruction, instructor, I was in the uh, health and phys ed department at Hofstra University, and I taught yoga every day. Oh, okay. So, so I'm, I'm bringing this stuff in now. There's the alternate mastral breathing, some of you may know, from yoga. And if not, just look it up on the internet. And it's very good. It's very helpful for clearing the sinuses in the steam room or the shower. Mm -hmm. And it's very helpful to center you. So I have this whole routine with the alternate nostril breathing. So then my, my you know, passageways are clear. And <laughs> Are you talking then, about breaths of fire? No. Oh, okay. It go, it's a... Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Oh, yeah, I've done that. Yeah. So that, that is very good to center you and also to clear your sinuses if you have that. I have that, those problems oftentimes. So, <laughs> so doing that and then the tapping is like, I'm good to go. <laughs> You're good to go for the day. Yeah. <laughs> Do you um, certify anyone else in EFT? No, I decided not to go that route. Um, okay. I do teach it. If anyone wants to get a group together, I could happily uh, work with your group, but I, I don't have groups organized at this time. Oh, okay. I like that. Definitely. So if anyone's interested in learning or want to take classes, you could definitely contact um, Ellen. Um, her, all her information's in the show, in the show notes. Yes, my name is Eileen, right? Eileen, I'm sorry. It's Eileen. Okay. It's, uh, I know what, who you meant. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I have one more question for you. Um, where exactly did, or how exactly did EFT start? Who, who was the founder? Okay. And um, how did it um, get its momentum? Because I'm noticing now that uh, more and more people are starting to talk about EFT. Yes. Um, the Gary Craig mm -hmm. was the original, um, founder. Okay. He had the, this, and it was based also a lot on kinesiology. Okay. And since my certification, there have been branches of that and additional certifications and so on. And that's one of the reasons I've decided not to go the certifying route because there are so many different uh, schools of EFT now. Oh, okay. Certification, you know. So um, anyway, I'm very, uh, something else I'm gonna just um, add in because in addition to possibly losing belly fat because you're losing the cortisol, um, it's EFT tapping is really good with reducing or eliminating cravings. Oh, nice. So if you um, are an emotional eater, for instance, and you really have the intention to change that, and it's so difficult. I, um, I took the EFT certification training with a colleague who's an eating disorder psychotherapist. Mm -hmm. And she was convinced that this truly helped many of her patients. And I sometimes see clients who also have this issue. And it just fits right 
in because you say, okay, so you find out when do they want to eat? You know, when do they want to fill up that empty hole, so to speak? Mm -hmm. So instead of opening the refrigerator like that, when they get that um, trigger thought, they could stand in front of it and start tapping or walk away if they can and start tapping. If they have, if some people say, oh, but nothing's in my house. So I go out to the store and buy it and eat it. And, and then I say, well, when you get to your front door, start tapping. Don't let yourself in the car to go get it like that. And it, it's really helped a lot of clients with that. Oh, nice. So I could just imagine um, even um, shopping, as you um, talked about, if you, um, before you make an impulse purchase, yes, you could use it. Yes. So basically you're just re it's like, you're kind of, um, I would say you're refocusing your brain. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. And I'm not, uh, an addiction counselor and I won't work with people who have, uh, drug or alcohol addiction who are not in treatment. Mm -hmm. However, if they already are in treatment or they're in recovery, I've worked with so many clients who are in recovery for a long time. It works really, really well because these people are really um, passionate about keeping sober. Yes, and actually they admitted that they have a problem. So yes. Yes. in that case, it would definitely work with them because that's something they want to do. They want yes. to continue to, conti um, to remain sober. So I could definitely see you, the reason why you would do that. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes <laughs> I have, I've had clients who, they stop smoking except for like two or three cigarettes a day. Mm -hmm. So I, I help them to get that out of the way. <laughs> oh, nice. So you definitely, you help out so much, especially with addictions. Well, people who uh, admit to having addictions, those who um, are looking to reduce their stress, um, help with their anger. So EFT is really all around just something that's quite helpful. And general confidence and empowerment, that, that, that is the main thing, really, because in order to do all those uh, things you just said, one has to feel confident and self-assured. So that's what EFT really does and, and eliminates, it can transform procrastination. Yes. Because procrastination is fear-based, always. and this was really interesting for me to learn when I learned it. And procrastination is either uh, one or all of these above fear of failure, fear of being judged, fear of success, or fear of being controlled. Mm -hmm. So if uh, anyone has an issue they're procrastinating about, and they know deep down, they know either they really want to get it done or they really just want to toss it. Mm -hmm. I could help them figure that out with EFT. Nice. Something just came to me. I was wondering, can you actually take us through what uh, a EFT, if you do a session, um, what exactly would you say to a client or would you have? Oh, yes, of course. Okay. We start with three setup phrases, which this is kind of strange, but they are negative affirmations. Mm-hmm which means you are acknowledging what your issue, what your challenge is. So for instance, if I was procrastinating, let's say I, I procrastinated about um, oh, something ridiculous, I don't know, tell me what. Let's say I procrastinated about- Oh, writing a term paper. Okay, writing a term paper, and I know I really have to do it. So three set of phrases for that could be, even though I put up, put off writing this term paper for so long, I love and accept myself. Now, of course, I check with the client before I use those words, do you mm -hmm. love and accept yourself? So if they don't, then we change it, okay? Mm -hmm. So you could say there's a choice method. Even though I procrastinated writing this paper for so long, I choose to start writing it tonight. So you do three like that. Even though this paper gets me totally, the thought of writing this paper gets me totally overwhelmed, 
I choose to let go of that feeling and get down to the research so I can write it. So three statements in that um, way. And then tapping on the points uh, and the practitioner, when you're learning it, first speaks in the client's voice and the client repeats and copies and, and um, edits anything that could sound better. So in that uh, process, it, first it's negative, like you state all these negative issues in the tapping. And then after a while, you switch it up to positive. It's like, yes, I know I can do it. I, I will start tonight, I'm sure of it. So there are different ways of playing with it. Mm -hmm. Before we start tapping, I ask the client or the practitioner, ask the client, what is their level of distress? Zero to 10, 10 being the most, that they're procrastinating or whatever the issue is, okay? So usually it's like eight, say, or nine or something. And after tapping, we ask the same question. And almost always, really, 95% of the time, the number goes way down. Because you eliminate these negative hormones. And you're feeling good. And, and you're gaining confidence. So another, another way to measure this um, tapping, you know, how successful it's been, say on a level of zero to 10, 10 being the most, how confident are you that you could start this paper tonight, like we said? And the person's like way up there. It's amazing. That is amazing. I think of like, um, it's like um, um, counteracting negative self-talk. Exactly. That's, that's a good way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you're bringing out what you find negative and then yes. you are rewording that to positive while tapping on the meridians to refocus your brain. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like that. Yeah, it's great. I, I've been doing it since I was certified about 10 years ago. I've been tapping every single day. Oh, nice. But there's always something to tap about. Before that, I had taken, over the years, so many self-development and personal and career development courses mm -hmm. and so on. And, you know, I, I felt like I had a lot of issues resolved from knowing what I knew and learning how to do things differently. But I still had, as most people do, leftovers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And trigger points. And when those happened, it was like, until... I learned the tapping. There was nothing I could do to stop that, that reaction response from those triggers. And this has just changed my life. I see. And you're quite passionate about it, which yeah. is great. I love that. And then you're, you're, you're using that to share with others. Yes. So they can live a, um, a more, I would say, holistic lifestyle, as I like to say. Yes. So Eileen, is there anything else that you would like to, um, to add before we close today? Um, let's just uh, give my phone number again. If you would like to have uh, a complimentary co phone consult, my phone number landline is 516-623-4353. And my website is balance and power.com okay and i all of um eileen's um information will be in the show notes as well as a link to her website and all her social media outlets and all those links will be there also subscribe to her youtube channel she has some great videos on there um to watch and you could learn all about what um eileen does I thank you so much, Eileen, for being on today's episode of Just Dropping Gems. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And um, hopefully you'll come back on again one day. I'd love that, Keisha. Thanks again. It's been wonderful being interviewed here. Yes, thank you. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. Peace and blessings to you. Thank you so much for listening to Just Dropping Gems podcast. 
This episode is sponsored by Dennis Richards, founder and executive producer of the hashtag Pink and Sexy Gala for Sickle Cell. As a Sickle Cell warrior, it is her passion to find a non-invasive universal cure for Sickle Cell and improve the lives of those living with Sickle Cell on Long Island. Come out and enjoy hashtag Pink and Sexy Gala Long Island Fashion Show Fundraiser for Sickle Cell on Saturday, July 27th, 2019 at the Gramercy Barroom in Rockville Center, Long Island. This year, the hashtag Pink and Sexy team will honor Sickle Cell Warriors living on Long Island. Want to find out how to support this great cause? Please check the show notes for more information. It is also sponsored by Keisha's Gems and Dropping Gems Publishing. Be sure to visit our website where we offer holistic solutions with the soul in mind. And check out my new books, Healthy Gems, Nourishing Practices and Self-Care Tips for Busy Individuals, and Holistic Gems, How to Treat Seasonal and Year-Long Allergies Naturally, available on Amazon or purchase an autographed copy on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.droppinggems.com. That's www.droppinggems.com. If you are interested in becoming a sponsor or advertising on this podcast, you can contact us at keishasgems.com. That's www.keishasgems.com. Or email us at keishasgems at gmail.com. Much abundance to you. Peace and blessings.